Dr. Jamila Nimadi is the chief scientist of NeuroPro, a Swiss medical technology company based in Zurich and is also a senior research fellow at the Institute of Biomedical Engineering at Imperial College in London. His background is that for a couple of decades he has been developing technology like uh, three-dimensional virtual worlds or uh, algorithms for neural signal analysis. Somehow all that comes together into what is going to talk about and show you. Dr. Alimad, it's a pleasure to welcome you on stage. Welcome. Thank you very much. I'll start by introducing a little bit about uh, NeuroPro. NeuroPro is, a, is one of the startups of W Science. What I would like to share with you today is some of the work that we are doing at NeuroPro. The title of my presentation, EEG, a microphone in a crowd, is a reminder to all of us that EEG signals are by and large an abstract of what is actually going on in the brain, but it's nowhere near accurate. Yet, we see EEG remains the best choice for analyzing time series uh, brain activity. My talk will focus on the EEG-based solutions we are developing for patients, clinicians, and researchers. Before I move on to this topic, uh, I would like to show you a slide on the evolution of microprocessors from my personal experience. If you look at this uh, mainframe uh, computers here, you see that guy in the middle, that's me. That was back in the 90s. And we were uh, transforming a large IBM mainframe and replacing these equipment you see here to these two machines boxes here. The first mainframe had a 16-bit processor with about 24 gigabytes of disk storage. And it needed all these equipments to get that information in. We replaced it about 1995 with these two devices here. And that had a 32-bit processor and uh, a 44 gig of, uh, of disk storage. Today, the iPad in my hand has a 64-bit processor and has many more times power than these multi-million dollars of IBM mainframes. And that's only about around 20 years ago. So if we turn to the revolution in EEG equipment, on the left, you will see Einstein, probably early 50s, getting his brain uh, examined. <laughs> the machines on the right is what most hospitals use today. Have they changed much? Well, they're a bit smaller. The electrodes are a lot more powerful. And I think the machines have wheels now. They didn't have that before. And that's a 60 year of evolution. So that lends itself for us to say there is opportunities that we can have to improve that whole process, and this is what we set out to do. So, what are we doing uh, at NeuroPro as far as uh, EEG uh, data is concerned? The first thing we are doing is we have developed a product line that improves the capture of EEG signal and makes it easy uh, to use. These devices can operate standalone, and at the moment we're doing one to eight channel and we hope we will improve that in the future. Their use is for post-diagnose monitoring or for personalized use, which I will demonstrate uh, to you uh, later on in the speech. For clinicians and researchers, we are developing the very first EEG repository that is cloud-based, which not only uses cloud services for data storage, but also uses cloud services for brain signal analysis. This means that analysis that would otherwise take hours to do can be done in minutes at a fraction of the cost. This global cloud service will be launched by Neuropo in the second quarter of next year, and uh, we're very excited about that. To support this EEG data bank, we developed a series of front-end systems. The most exciting one is the ones that run on iOS devices such as iPads, because it exploits the incredible capacity of these machines. 
e.g. data and metadata is accessible in a way that has not been done before in terms of simplicity of use, in terms of the powerful end user interface that we built to display these traditional spike data alongside a complex 3D mathematical visualization tools. So if you look on the right, this is the modeling of that EG data in 3D. And these uh, applications are running today on the iPad. For epilepsy, we are working closely with uh, the Swiss Epilepsy Center and others. And we are focusing in, in the areas that Professor Grunwald talked about, i.e. in detection and prediction. The Swiss Epilepsy Center is the most reputed hospital for epilepsy in Western Europe. And with the help of Professor Thomas Grunwald and his uh, team, Dr. Peter Hilfiker and Mr. Ian Marisel, we are testing our epilepsy algorithm, YNAM. Our proprietary set of algorithms that Dr. Walid Jafali and myself initiated at Imperial College, focusing on epilepsy detection and prediction. I'll be further discussing uh, this topic uh, in my subsequent slides, but, uh, but basically, all in all, we are attacking this, this sector head on. We are building an infrastructure in the cloud that is today running, it exists, we haven't opened it up for researchers yet, that allows any devices including OEM, other equipment manufacturers' devices, to connect to it, push all the EEG data, which is very big. So most hospitals and neuroscience centers find difficulty in managing this data. So we're taking that whole headache of that data and managing it for them on the cloud. And uh, the results in terms of turnaround, uh, from analysis to uh, accessibility, have been uh, very, very encouraging. So that's, in a nutshell, what we are doing for EG. We're building devices that capture the signal. We are building an infrastructure that allows, around the globe, any institute to pass that data for our management, not only from uh, a data storage point of view, but also from analysis and visualization. So if we turn back to epilepsy, YNAM is a proprietary algorithm that uses neuro, neural binary pattern matching techniques to actually predict and detect seizures. YNAM searches for rhythmic patterns in predefined intervals of brain recorders in real time, and that's very important because doing it offline is too late. When we don't find them, we flag the signals as offbeats or what we call them as anomalies. So we have a philosophy, and our philosophy in YNAM is very simple. The brain, we see it as an orchestra consisting of 100 billion neurons, or we'll swap the neurons to musicians. We cannot hear them clearly, but we can certainly make out the rhythms of that music. YNAM searches the rhythms, and the patterns associated with these uh, rhythms in predefined intervals and report non-rhythmic behavior. So, how do we do it? We have a very simple approach. We group the brain signals, we analyze into three distinct categories. The first one is the normal state, where we find a very high rhythmic patterns. The second category is where the rhythms in these intervals that I've marked here show pre-markers. And the third category is where there is, a, there is an event taking place. In the case of seizure, it's, a, it's an epileptic seizure. We have found, in many cases, that we are picking up the detection. And uh, we have had very good success rate with that. We've been focusing on grand mal seizures for predictions. And there is a couple of slides that I will share with you in one of the trials we did with epilepsy. Here you'll see uh, a patient who had two seizures successive, and these are the seizures here. That's the first one, and that's the second one. Now, we ran our algorithm. The data you'll see is not based on the traditional spikes and amplitude. This is our anomalies ratios. So we saw the pre-markers. If you see these low ratios here, we have 
normal state. We saw the first early warning of the seizure coming, and that was about 45 minutes before. Then the patient went into a normal state. Then we saw another pre-marker appearing. Then we went to a normal state, and then the seizure came and followed by a second seizure. Moving to the second hour of that patient, as he went to normalized state, you see that uh, the seizures have subsided and the anomaly ratio uh, in the EG recordings have gone back to normal. One of our biggest challenges is continuous this test is actually getting hold of data that we can run trials on. We are hopeful that by the end of next year, we will be in a strong position uh, in our clinical validation trials that we're doing now. So uh, this is really what we're doing at NeuroPro. And what I would like to show you now is a, is a little demo. I have uh, the lead designer who developed uh, the, uh, the EG headset, Mario, who's wearing one of our headsets. And he's connected now live to the Swiss Epilepsy Center in, uh, in uh, Zurich, the Swiss EPI. And hopefully, we can demonstrate to you, see if uh, Mario this morning is still drowsy by having a, a, a professor, a doctor at the Swiss EPI check his brain in real time. Here we go. This is just coming from Switzerland. And and we are picking up now Mario's recording from one electrode and passing it direct to uh, the hospital. Now, we're working a lot to seal these devices. We're, we're aiming to have them ambulatory, and we're working hard to make sure that we clean up the noise. This is the biggest challenge now with taking them forward. And uh, these devices will be ready for non-clinical use. We'll be using them for research, and thereafter we will apply them for clinical use. So uh, what Professor Grunwald was talking about uh, is no longer science fiction as far as uh, seizures uh, is concerned. And as far as EG data, we will have these tools uh, available to apply uh, anywhere in the world. The headsets we have developed can capture EG of up to eight electrodes. They can capture the ECG simultaneously. They have a gyroscope and they have an accelerometer. So we can use also the movement of the patients to, to understand some of the behavior and alert uh, to some warnings. So uh, this is my topic uh, for today, and uh, thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Can I stay for a second on stage with me? Because I'm intrigued by something. You've been working in this field for a long time. And uh, when we met the first time, you told me about programming computers that are as big as a house. And now you just made this demo basically using an iPad. And uh, I think for, for, for the, the, the average person, an iPad or a smartphone is more of a, a personal device, something that we use to connect with friends or to listen to music or to take a photo. Uh, and here, suddenly, you are saying, these devices, tablets and smartphones, are actually a game changer for science. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, if you think about it from the slide I showed you earlier, what we're carrying in our pocket is a, is a personal mainframe today. Yeah. And most of us use it for text messaging and making phone calls, and we have some few applications. These tools are now so powerful we didn't have a few years ago. So revisiting this area of science and looking at what we can do to personalize healthcare is, is, is no longer something in the distant future. This is, in the, I, I predict, within the next five years, there will be a science revolution in terms of personalized healthcare. Diagnostics, prevention, of course, which is a very important area that the other speakers spoke about today. And also in terms of uh, helping uh, physicians, uh, reducing costs in hospital beds. You don't have to have the patient uh, in the hospital being monitored. He can be monitored at home. So mobile devices will certainly revolutionize the way we look at healthcare. And these big, uh, very expensive machines, I think, will, will have their use, but 
in front of them, ahead of them, there will be a, a number of personalized devices out there that will help us lead better lives. But the, the, there used to be similar devices already in hospitals, transportable mobile, people, nurses and doctors would go around with them, but they would be developed specifically for that task. So they would be very expensive, they would be limited in the range of what they can do, and suddenly a commercial device that we can buy for $500 can actually do that and can replace those Absolutely. specific machines. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah. the price is coming down and the range of potential is expanding. Absolutely. Basically, this is the team who's been helping us get that far. Most of them are here today, so if you recognize their faces, feel free to accost them and uh, talk to them about what we're doing uh, in, the, in the break. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you.